No, Jasmine, I was looking at the summer fest and this is gonna be a good time. Look, we have merengue dancing. We got the actual fun run. We got new obstacle courses, food trucks, refreshment. This is gonna be a good time. Andre, there are so many exciting things taking place. And next up, we have Vacation Bible School, which will be July 11th through July 15th. And don't forget, we are still looking for volunteers. So sign up today. Is that gonna be you? Are you gonna volunteer? Jasmine, look, I volunteer to start the Avenue News. Church family, I'm Andre Kahn Jr. And I am Jasmine Yates. And it's time for your Avenue, Avenue News. News. WABC is celebrating 60 years of service to God and God's people. We're creating a historical document that will include a collection of photographic memories, which will reflect the last 60 years in the life of Wheeler. This includes photos of all family units. The photo sessions have begun and will end on July 10th. So don't delay. Visit the events page on our website to schedule your appointment. Our health is being restored. Wounds are being healed. In-person, outdoor, and indoor community service has returned with WABC's Summerfest 2022. A fun run, symposium on wellness and disease prevention. A town hall on gun violence and racism awaits you on July 9th, starting at 7 a.m. The fun run, merengue dancing, new obstacle courses, food trucks, refreshments, and prizes, wellness screenings, medical and mental health seminars, and interactive lectures on African-American maternal and infant mortality, and youth and young adult suicide prevention highlights the services offered to the community. The WABC Summerfest 2022 will have happy times for the children with bouncy houses, mini obstacle courses, basketball, and computer games. Join us for fun on July 9th. Family Vacation Bible School will be back on campus July 11th through the 15th. This summer, VBS, kick imagination into high gear at Spark Studios. We will learn that God's creativity did not stop in Genesis. The master artist is always working to redeem, reclaim, and make us his creation into the design that he planned for us. So join us nightly for Family VBS. We have registration for all ages. Register online today at wheelerbc.org. Attention Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Lewis Language Services would like to announce that there are two Zoom Spanish classes starting in the fall, one in the morning and one in the evening. Both classes will meet on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. The morning class will take place from 9 to 9.45 a.m. and the evening class will be from 5 to 5.45 p.m. Both classes begin on Monday, July 18th and are only $30 per week if you are a Wheeler Avenue member. Call Mr. Lewis to register for either class before July 13th at 832-650-6960. The first five people to register will receive $10 off their initial payment. It's time for Wheeler Avenue B2 School Revival. The Wheeler Avenue youth and children are preparing to let their light shine in the upcoming school year. And we're gonna kick it off with Friday Night Lights on July 29th with guest preacher, Pastor Sippo Malenga, student pastor at St. Mark Baptist Church in Little Rock, Arkansas. On Saturday, we'll continue the fun at Andretti's Indoor Karting and Games. And then on Sunday, we'll all come together for worship and we invite every single person to rep their school, elementary, middle, high school, and college. For more information and to register your child or youth for Andretti's, visit the church website. Wheeler Avenue Youth. Our youth worship experiences are taking place every Sunday and we want you to be a part of it. Every first and third Sunday, we will have Bible and breakfast at 10 a.m. Just bring your Bible and we will provide the breakout sessions and breakfast. Additionally, every second and fourth Sunday at 11.30 a.m., we will have Youth Church, a youth experience for the youth by the youth. Food will be served immediately thereafter. The Brook Bible Study presents Revelation and Relaxation every Wednesday at 6 p.m. All college students are invited to come over for food, fun, and fellowship at 6 p.m. Contact Reverend Richard Boone at rboone at wheelerbc.org for more information. The Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church Social Justice Ministry continues our church tradition of fighting for justice, equity, and action in our community. Join us for our monthly ministry meetings on the third Thursday of each month at 6.30 p.m. on Zoom to get involved in the important work that God has called for us to do in these turbulent times. Register today on the events page on the church website so you can use your voice to speak up, 
Speak Out, and Speak Often in the WABC Social Justice Ministry. Your vote, your voice, your power. You can register to vote on the first and third Sundays of each month in the foyer of the cathedral in between worship services. We must change the political landscape of our country for the sake of our children's future. So get registered and go vote. There's so much taking place and we hope you're staying connected. For more information, follow us on Flocknote, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or our app. I'm Jasmine Yates. And I'm Andre Kahn Jr. And this is your Avenue, Avenue News. News. Don't forget, we are Wheeler wherever. Church family, it's time for worship. I'm going to stay here and trust God to work this out until I have the victory over my adversity. It took 14, right at 15 years, they thought it wasn't gonna happen. And look at us now, we just kept on praying. We kept on believing, we kept on paying, and look at what the Lord has done. It may take a good deal of time. There may be some pushback along the way, but you keep on pushing back until you get what you need from the Lord. Hallelujah, we came this morning to celebrate the blood that was shed for our sins over 2,000 years ago. Hallelujah, somebody give God glory today. Come on, clap your hands to God. Let's sing this song together. I know it was the blood.
saturate us, oh God. Not only by the power of your blood, but then by the power of your spirit. Oh, wind of God, breath of God, you are welcome in this place. We feel your presence already, and we showed up to give you glory, God. So move how you want to move, and do what you want to do, and we will give you the glory. We will give you the honor. We will bless your name, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, and the power, and the glory, and the power, and the glory.
Hallelujah. 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 Because of the blood we have been saved. Because of the blood we have been redeemed. Because of the blood we have been made new. And once we have been redeemed, we follow the ordinance of the Lord, the command of the Lord to go into the waters of baptism and to move from old life to new life in Christ. If anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creature. Old things are passed away, washed away. Behold, all things become new. Let's go to the water now and celebrate what happens when we've been washed in the blood. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister, Dion Janae Darby, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Take me to the water. Hallelujah. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister, Talina Louise Kelly, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, Lord. Sing, church. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Take me to the water. Be baptized. In obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister Aubrey Lynette Lewis, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Bless you, God bless you, God. Sing, beloved. None but the righteous. Hallelujah. None but the righteous. Shall see God. Shall see God. Yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, In obedience to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our sister, Antoinette Ransom, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh,
In obedience to the great commission of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother Denzel Demond LeBlanc, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Oh, I of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and based upon the profession of your faith in him we now baptize you our brother Lance Jacob Lewis in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost Amen Bless you Lance oh, Bless you. Hallelujah Hallelujah Jesus. Sing beloved I love Jesus. If you love him sing, 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 sing to the great head of the church, even our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and based upon the profession of your faith in him, we now baptize you, our brother, Alton Ray Pouncey, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Good morning, church family. Will you stand for the responsive reading for this morning and continue to stand because we will have our congregational hymn uh, at the end of the reading. Our reading is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. You will find the scriptures uh, on the screens in front of you. Let us begin. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body, eat and drink judgment against themselves. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. Together? Eat at home. And when you come together, you are doing the very hard things. And the other things that will give instruction in their home. Our focus for the service, for as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes.
going. If you thank God for the blood of Jesus on this Sunday, why don't you give great praise to our great God who is worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun even unto the setting of the same hour. God is worthy on this day to be praised. Come on, if you know you've been saved by the blood, ransomed by the blood, bought at a price, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Thank God for the blood. What a joy. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Listen, I'm delighted on this Lord's Day to give great praise to our great God and to give thanks to God for the presence of special guests who are with us on this Sunday. If this is your very first time at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, if you're a first-time visitor, would you stand so that we can thank God for your presence? Any first-time visitors this Sunday? Wow. Wow. Amen, amen, amen. Church family, help me give a really warm Wheeler welcome to all of our first-time guests. To each of you who stands as first-time visitor on behalf of our pastor, the Reverend Dr. Marcus D. Cosby, and our founding pastor emeritus, the Reverend Dr. William Alexander Lawson, whom we always honor and thank God for on behalf of our senior pastor, our founding pastor, and the entirety of the church family known as Wheeler Avenue, allow for me to express to each of you just how delighted we are that you've opted to worship with us on this Sunday. We're clear that you had options as to where you might choose to spend this day in worship, so we neither take it for granted nor likely that you are here with us. If you have a church home, please take back our warmest greetings and regards. Express to your church family just how excited we were to worship with you on this Sunday. However, if you don't have a church family, we pray that you would truly be blessed by the entirety of this experience of worship, even as you're engaged in it. We want for you to make yourselves at home. We would love to call you our sisters, our brothers, and the family of faith and body of believers here at Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Whatever your reality is, we are genuinely excited that you are here, and I can prove it to you one more time. Church family, help me thank God for all of our first-time visitors. Amen. Amen. You may claim your seats, and as you do, we always want to acknowledge those brothers and sisters who worship with us virtually. We thank God for the Wheeler Wherever family, wherever you are around this, our great God's globe. It is our joy to welcome you even virtually into this experience, and we pray that you have been and will be blessed as a consequence of this service of worship. We want for you, likewise, if you're on Facebook or YouTube, to let us know, especially if it's your very first time, and there are brothers in those, those chats who would gladly greet you with the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on on this day. Thank God for the Wheeler Wherever family. Would you please, my sisters, my brothers? Amen. Amen. Now, we don't just thank God for our first-time friends and those who view us via the World Wide Web. We thank God for each of you who has made your way to the cathedral to worship our great God on this Lord's Day. So why don't you give yourselves a hand as we give thanks to our great God on this Lord's Day.
we do, yes we do, yes we do. I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house of the Lord. Anybody glad to be in the service one more time? What a joy it is to be in the Lord's house this Sunday morning and to honor the Lord for who he is and for all that he has done Sunday afternoon at this point. And what a joy it has been to be in worship for these past 40 minutes or so. Thank God for our magnificent music ministry and for all that they do to help us to worship the Lord on the wings of song. Thank God for our newly baptized sisters and brothers. They're a part of our family. And we're grateful for all of them who have gone into the waters of baptism. And although we have recognized him as we should have, the Bible says that this man of God is worthy of double honor. So will you help me celebrate our founding father today? Thank God for Pastor William Alexander Lawson. We honor you, sir. 94 years old. He was 93 last Sunday, and he's 94 this week. Lord, have mercy. Look at that. I love it. Looking real good chilling with his season saint shirt on yes sir praise the name of the lord how we honor pastor lawson as always for who he is as the man of god that he is and for our founding pastor and uh, for being such a genuine and wonderful person and we thank god for him and for his beloved family and caregivers and all those who take care of him from this congregation with your love and support Listen, there's several things that are happening. We've already made it to the seventh month of the year. I mentioned in the first service, it's amazing how swiftly June flew past us. I don't know if it felt like that for you, but for me, it was as if June was just a blip on the radar screen. But we're grateful that God has brought us into this second half of 2022. And to God be the glory for that reality. Amen. Amen. I want you to know that we are still taking pictures for the pictorial directory. However, all of the dates that had been scheduled have now passed. And because there are still many of you who are requesting dates, we are securing more dates now. And so we'll have some dates in the days to come. And I'll announce those as those dates are made available to us. I just need you to do one thing. Thank you for all those who have already taken your pictures. We appreciate you. But I just need you to do one thing. If you sign up. Will you please show up? It's, it's real helpful when you show up for your picture assignment. So please, for sisters and brothers, when you sign up, make sure that you show up so that we can make those pictures available to the company that will assemble our pictorial directory for the 60th year of the life of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. And so we look forward to that coming out later this year. We're going to try to expedite it as much as we can uh, to make sure that everyone's picture is included who wants their picture included, and then we will make them available to the the church later on this year. Our Summer Fest is coming up next Saturday. Next Saturday, our Summer Fest includes a fun run. It includes a health fair. It includes, it includes what else is it? it? Recycle day. If you have some big recyclables that you need to bring to the church, we invite you to do all of that. The fun run, walk, you can walk or run however you choose to participate. It begins at 730, and we invite you to register forward and join uh, those who will run and walk at 730 next Saturday morning and then after the fun run we'll have a health fair I think that's 9 30 Dr. Donnie Evans and his team will help us to get some information regarding our health and regarding all the many medical realities that are happening in our world right now uh, COVID-19 notwithstanding and then we hope that you will participate uh, in the recycle day by bringing those recyclables we want to maintain uh, the green earth as much as we possibly can we believe in recycling so we invite you to do that uh, this coming Saturday it's going to be great they just bring the family. It's going to be food, fun, frivolity. All that is going to happen right here on the campus of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. Anytime in the morning into the early afternoon, we invite you to come by the church and participate in our summer fest. And then two days later, after we have the second Sunday worship service, on Monday, July 18th, we be, I'm sorry, July 11th, July 11th, we begin Vacation Bible School. Vacation Bible School. See, look up and down your row. The folk who are not clapping have never been to a vacation Bible school at Wheeler Avenue. They don't know what that means. It is not your ordinary vacation Bible school. And so we invite you to give it a try. If you haven't been to vacation Bible school since you were eight and now you are 38 
This is your year. This is your year. We invite you to participate in Vacation Bible School and classes and, and, and experiences for all ages and stages of life. And all of you are invited to Vacation Bible School. We have a meal that is prepared at the top of the evening. And then throughout the evening, you have a good time with brothers and sisters in the congregation. It gives you an opportunity to fellowship with sisters and brothers you may or may not know. And we invite you to do that July 11th through the 5th. 15th. Listen, trustee nominations forms will be provided to you tomorrow morning. Every year by our Constitution, per the Constitution that our Pastor Emeritus provided for us as a congregation, we are to elect or re-elect trustees, trustees. And so every year we either elect or re-elect trustees, and this year is no different. The trustee nominations forms will be on our website tomorrow morning, beginning tomorrow, and we invite you to check out the criteria for all trustees, the criteria for trustees. It is fairly stringent. And so if you know of someone, even if you know of yourself, who meets the criteria, we invite you to nominate yourself or someone else for the position of trustee. Please, friend, make sure you meet the criteria. There is a vetting process, and it really slows down the process if one does not meet all of that, the criteria. So we can vet those persons and be, make them available for our church meeting at the end of August. And so we look forward to those who will be either elected or re-elected as a trustee for the Wheeler Avenue Church. Those 13 people govern the fiscal management of Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church, and they do so with excellence. They have a very, a very tedious job, but we're grateful that they serve the Lord with gladness, and we invite persons who would be nominated to do the same if they are elected by this congregation. Now, you got to know that the deadline for the nominations forms is July 16th. The deadline, you got two weeks, two weeks to nominate. The deadline is July 16th, so when you get on the website tomorrow or any day this week, I know that July 16th, this, this must be submitted. Uh, there will be no extension to that, and we hope that you will participate in the governance of your church. That's July 16th, July 16th. Speaking of July, oh my. Speaking of July, we have moved through the six months that stood in our way. And now we have made it to the seventh month of the year. You know, seven is the number of perfection. It's the number of completion. This is the Lord's month. And I'm going to ask all those who are celebrating in the month of July to please stand. Look at all these energetic, vivacious individuals who are standing up. Praise the Lord. You see Minister Leon Christopher Lewis standing up over there July 21st. We're excited. My mother's standing up over there July 22nd. Deaconess Tanya Lattimore is back in the back. Today is her birthday. God bless you, ma'am. Praise God for you. We celebrate with all of these precious people born in the month of July. And for these next several minutes, let's serenade all of these July babies this afternoon. Sing it good now. Come on. I can't hear you. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. Now think about that thing. Let's go. Many more. Why is the team not clapping? What is this about? I'm going to find seven new preachers this week. I'm taking applications because they're tripping over there. They are tripping. <laughs> it's all right. Mm -hmm. Staff meetings coming up. Praise the Lord. Y'all pray for you. No, now you want to clap. No, don't clap now. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It's going to be a great month. And we invite you to participate in the celebration of your friends and family as they celebrate their births uh, this month, this month. But well, it's offering time in the Lord's church and we're excited about giving. The Lord loves a cheerful giver and we with cheer, with joy, with delight, with enthusiasm, give back to God a portion of what God has given to us. And as we give back to the Lord this Sunday afternoon, we remember that the tithe, T-I-T-H-E, the tithe is holy unto the Lord. The Bible says that we're supposed to bring that tithe into the storehouse that there will be provisions, meat in God's house. 
Then we can try him, test him, prove him. See that he will not open the windows of heaven and pour us out blessings that we have room that we do not have room enough to receive. Many of us are giving digitally. We give through our devices as we have since the beginning of the pandemic, but others have chosen to give through envelopes, that tangible gift that you're able to drop in the drop box that is in the atrium and along the walls of the Christian education complex. And if you choose to use the drop box, we invite you to get an envelope from these ushers who are passing through the aisles now. Thank God for the courtesy core members who do their jobs with delight and with excellence. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your service in the Lord's house. And as we honor the Lord with our tithes and offerings, we consecrate them unto the Lord so that God supernaturally, miraculously will exponentially multiply them for the use, for their use in kingdom building and for God's glory in all the earth. As we prepare to give this Sunday afternoon, let's pray as we consecrate our gifts. Gracious God, we thank you for the privilege of giving because we are allowed to emulate you as we give, you are the great giver of every perfect gift, and we thank you so much for continuing to love us enough to give to us everything that we need, and then to go beyond our needs to supply all of our desires, the desires of our hearts. We thank you so much for your goodness and for your grace. And we pray now that as we give back unto you, that your grace will abound unto us, so that we will have all that we need in all situations to do every good work you've called us to do. Bless each gift and giver, will you please let no one lack as a consequence of what they give today. Return to your sons and daughters as you see fit, and we will glorify your name because we recognize afresh that we can't beat God giving no matter how we try. Thank you, great God, for victory in our finances. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Let's give unto our God. As we give, let me remind you, let me remind you that every Wednesday, we have prayer at least twice a day as a congregation every Wednesday. Uh, we have prayer at 6 a.m. and then again at 6 p.m. It is a virtual prayer experience during this time. And we, of course, the telephonic prayer experience at 6 a.m. Please join us for prayer. Uh, the numbers have begun to decline. It's summertime, and I know you're having a good time, but we can't have even a better time. We can't have a better time than when we communicate with our God in prayer. So join us for prayer Wednesday morning, 6 a.m., just for about 15, 17 minutes. And then at 6 p.m., Dr. Barnett and the prayer ministry will lead us in prayer uh, for that full hour of prayer at 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Let's pray together as a congregation and expect God to do great things. Now, the choir is going to minister to us. They're going to prepare us for the word of God. Aren't you grateful that we have one of the singingest, that's not even a word, singingest choirs in all of singendom? And they're going to sing, and musicians are going to minister, and they're going to prepare us for the word of God. about a savior that came from glory how he gave his life at calvary he did it all just for me they held him in his hand they led They nailed him to a cross to die, and all of the while he was thinking of me. Cause in those nails was every mistake I made. The thorns were formed from my lies. The lashes you took, they were meant for me. But you told the Father you would take them instead. You agreed to do it. You agreed to die. You agreed to give your life to save mine. 
Say 
your lips. Watch it to the praise of the Lord. To the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lily of the Valley, the bright and morning star. I will wheel in the middle of the wheel. He's a rock of our salvation. He's a keeper of Somebody ought to be grateful that he agreed. <laughs> he agreed to die that we might live. He agreed to take our place at Calvary. We can never repay him. But I'm surely going to praise him. That's for sure. That's for sure. I think we can all sing that together. I can never repay you but I'm sure gonna praise you. Can you sing that right quickly? Everybody, I can never repay you. Let's sing together. I can never repay you, but I'm sure gonna praise you. But I'm sure gonna praise you. <laughs> if that's your testimony, sing it. I can never repay you, but I'm sure gonna Hear the people of God say, I can never repay you for life, for health, for strength, for peace and joy and salvation. For the forgiveness of sins, for a sound mind, and for strengthening my body, for a good night's rest last night, for sustaining me throughout my life. Thank you that your grace is sufficient. I praise you that your mercies are new every morning. Come on, everybody, I could never repay you.
for reminding us that we didn't get to where we are by ourselves but because Jesus agreed to die in our place we have received a salvation that can never be taken away to God be the glory for the great things he has done let's continue to honor the Lord as we look into his word this afternoon We'll just take a few minutes, just about 25 to 27 minutes, and look into this passage of Scripture. I, uh, I'm excited about Jesus today. I'm trying to... This whole service has been having me smiling with joy about the things that God is doing around here. Praise the Lord. Our sermon series for the summer is The Classics. A few parables of Jesus, just a few parables of Jesus we'll look through throughout the months of June, July, and August. And today's parable comes from the New Testament gospel as recorded by the writer Luke, as has been the custom for the last couple of weeks. We can return our attention to the gospel of Luke. We began in chapter 15 with the prodigal son. We moved to chapter 10 with the good Samaritan. Now let's look at chapter 14. Chapter 14, you shall see why... This passage is so pivotal for us today. Chapter 14, Gospel of Luke. And I usually only read a few words or one verse or so. I want to read an extended passage today because I want you to hear all that's happening in the verses that begin at verse 15 and conclude with verse 24. The New Testament Gospel is recorded by the writer Luke beginning at, ch at, verse, at chapter 14 and verse 15. Hear the word of God from the New International Version of his holy word. When one of those at the table with him heard this, he said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. Jesus replied, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come, for everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. The first said, I have just bought a field and I must go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I have just bought five yoke of oxen and I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married so I can't come. Yeah. The servant came back and reported this to his master. Then the owner of the house became angry and ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. Sir, the servant said, what you ordered has been done, but there is still room. Then the master told his servant, Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. I tell you, not one of those who were invited will get a taste of my banquet. Amen. Praise God for his holy word. You may be seated in the presence of our good and gracious God. Go out to the roads and country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house will be full. By the time there's hours to share together on this Sunday afternoon, I want to ask a question. You in or out? You in or out? Bad grammar. Are you in or are you out? I just want to ask, you in or you out? You in or out? I, I am intrigued by Luke chapter 14. It is a pivotal and powerful passage of Scripture it gives to us a portrait, a picture of the kingdom of God. It helps us to understand how the kingdom of God operates. Luke chapter 14 gives us a beautiful picture of the will and ways of God. 
Luke chapter 14 helps us to have a, an appreciation for the plans, the purposes of God. When you read Luke chapter 14, you should get a picture of the mind, even the mystery of God. I like Luke chapter 14 because what Luke chapter 14 gives to us is a radical reorientation and revolution that is presented by the kingdom of God. Hear those words. I, I like those words. A radical revolution and reorientation into the things of God, the kingdom of God. That when you come into the kingdom of God, you learn fairly quickly that God doesn't operate like we do. When you come into the kingdom of God, you find out what the Old Testament prophet made clear long before the Lord Jesus came onto the scene in bodily form. He said, according to God, my ways are not your ways. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are higher than your thoughts, and my ways and thoughts are higher than yours. As far as the heaven is above the earth, so are my thoughts and my ways above yours, declares the Lord. And our responsibility when we come into the kingdom of God is not to maintain our same mentality, but to raise our level of thinking to meet that of God's because we should never expect that God would diminish his level of thinking just so we can be satisfied. Our responsibility as parts of the family of God is to raise our thinking, to begin to think like the Lord, to act like the Lord, to speak like the Lord, to treat others like the Lord does. Our responsibility is to raise our level of understanding of what it means to be a part of the family of God. Well, that's what Jesus is trying to teach on this certain day. When he with his disciples, I suspect, although the text does not submit that to us, he's there in a Pharisee's home. Now, this is intriguing. Please don't miss that very significant detail. Verse 1 makes it clear that Jesus is at the home of a Pharisee. And if that wasn't important enough, then he makes it even stronger, Pastor Lawson, by telling us in verse 3 that this dinner party where they find themselves is a dinner party that is filled with Pharisees and experts in the law. That's verse 3. That in this space, these folk who are steeped in the tradition of the law, who understand what it means to be a part of the Pharisaical tradition, they are experts in the, the, in the, the, the wonderful philosophies and theologies of the law. They thought they knew everything about how God would operate. They had God in a box. They refused to take God out of that box. They thought based upon their traditions, their mores, the steeped history into which they found themselves, that they knew everything about how God operated. And on this day, Jesus has to radically redefine what it means to be connected to God. He has to radically redefine what it means to have relationship with God and be in the kingdom of God. It's a reorientation. It is a redefinition. It is a revolution that happens when Jesus shows up on the scene. He comes to do the will of God, reminding us that he and the Father are one. He does nothing that the Father does not dictate. And so when he opens up chapter 14, Luke gives to us this picture of the Lord Jesus shifting the mindset, the mentality of these religious elites. He shifts the mindset, the mentality of these people who think they know it all. Pharisees, experts in the law, steeped in the tradition of the Jewish history. And when he begins to speak, Jesus looks at a man in that room who has some debilitation. He has some infirmity and Jesus shows us in verses 1 through 6 what it means to heal 
on the Sabbath day. Now you got to catch this. Jesus radically redefines, reorients what their understanding is of God's will. He teaches and shows by example that when there is a need, the need must be met and he is willing to meet the need. And he understands that these Pharisees, these experts in the law will be swift to judge him and they will say you're not supposed to do that on the Sabbath day. The law says you're not supposed to do that to which Jesus with a swift response says which one of you if your child fell into a pit or a ditch or if your ox fell in would not go and rescue it on the Sabbath day and he silenced the room. I love it. Jesus knows how to shut it down and so they had nothing else to say. Verses 1 through 6 he talks about healing on the Sabbath day but verses 7 through 11 he talks about honor and humiliation. He talks about humility to be sure. Watch what happens in verses 7 through 11. Jesus says now listen when you go into a space and you understand that there are a lot of people who have titles and prestige and they think a lot about themselves you make sure knowing that you think the same way that you don't go just take a seat of honor in somebody else's house because if you're not careful somebody with more honor might show up after you and you'll be asked to move from where you are to a lesser seat he says don't go in with the big head with your brilliant self don't go in smelling yourself as the elder saints would say he says take a position of humility and stop trying to always be honored as a matter of fact those who exalt themselves will be abased but those who oh you who, who, who are have oh humility or who humble themselves will be exalted and somebody today needs to understand that this is a necessary uh, necessary lesson for those of us with upward mobility ambitions this is a necessary lesson for us who think we are somebody whether in the community or in the congregation he says take a lesser seat and let somebody else exalt you when I was growing up as a preacher back in Chicago the old preachers would always tell us son it's better to be asked up than to be asked down yeah you better be real careful taking somebody's seat in a space where you were not invited to take it and so he teaches them about humility let the church say humility all of us need to learn it. All of us need to embody it. All of us need to practice it. He speaks first about healing on the Sabbath day. Then he speaks about humility and places of honor. But then in verses 12 through 14, he gives to them a lesson that goes even beyond that. He wants them to understand the lesson of helping others. He wants them to know that you can't just be satisfied getting yours and never help anybody else else to get theirs. He says there's a banquet that's been given and you must understand if you just invite your friends to the banquet who have the same accoutrements in life as you have, then you're not really doing much. You've got to make sure that you help other people who are less fortunate than you. He says they may not be able to repay you, but you'll be paid at the resurrection at the feast in heaven. Oh, this is good stuff. He says you may not be able to get it down here. You may not get your reward here, but your reward is in heaven. And he says, don't go looking for rewards. Your heavenly father knows what you need and he knows what you have done and he will reward you. Oh, church family, it sounds to me that Jesus tells us of the request I made of the congregation last Sunday. If you were here last Sunday, you'll remember that I asked you, I prayed that God would put somebody in your path that you could bless who could not bless you back. Yeah, I pray that you would be that good Samaritan in somebody else's life. Watch this. Before we left church last Sunday, somebody stopped Rem Alexander Johnson on the parking lot or maybe even in the cathedral and told him that they needed some assistance and he was duty bound to assist them. He didn't have any way out. He come busting in my office. Lord, that already answered your prayer. 
prayer. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm glad he answered my prayer. But Pastor Lawson, I thought I had gotten off. Pastor Lawson had a similar event on Tuesday. I thought I had gotten past it. I thought I had made it. I said, I told him what to do. I ain't have to do it. Didn't nobody get in my path until I was driving to church this morning. This morning, I got stopped on Wheeler Street at a red light. And this man, it was on, what, what, it wasn't Wheeler Street. What street was that? It was Wheeler, okay, it was Wheeler Street. We got stopped on Wheeler Street, and the brother had a cup in his hand. He was standing in the middle of the street with a cup in his hand. He at first went to the passenger side. Then he looked over at that driver's side, saw that fellow with a collar around his neck. He said, oh, yeah, I got me one now. I got me one now. On his way to church with his collar around his neck. And uh, my, my son said, Daddy, the light is green. I said, boy, I can't move this car until I get this man something. I went in my pocket and was able to bless somebody who was not able to bless me back. Oh, child of God, all of us would do well if we learn to be a willing vessel through which God could get blessings and not just to which God gives blessings. Can I give anybody in here today who can testify it really is a blessing to be a blessing? Yes, yes, it's a blessing to be a blessing. And so, church family, Jesus teaches about helping others. He teaches about honor and humility. And he teaches about healing, even on the Sabbath day, meeting the need when the need needs to be met. And when he does that, he closes that little message talking about the feast that's going to happen in heaven. It is an eschatological experience. It is an end time experience. It is that which is to happen at the coming of the Christ when he returns and retrieves the church. And we are all at the marriage feast, the, at the wedding feast that God gives for us through Jesus Christ. And then one of those scholars, one of those experts makes a statement that that is supposed to trap or at least trick Jesus. He makes that statement. I read it to you in verse 15. Let me reread it because Jesus has just talked about that wonderful feast that's going to happen and then one of those at the table with Jesus heard this and said to Jesus, blessed is the one who will eat at the feast in the kingdom of God. He said, okay, I see what you're doing. You want to challenge me on what it means to be at the feast in the kingdom of God because these Pharisees thought that only the people who looked like them, thought like them, acted like them, behaved and believed like them would be at the feast. And so Jesus now has to school the scholar. Sit down, young buck. I got something to say. He begins to help him understand what it means to be at the feast in the kingdom of God. This expert in the law, he may not have been a young buck. He may have been an old scholar. And Jesus, with his 30-something self, 30-something year old self, has to school him on what it means to be in the kingdom of God. Listen to how he says it. He says, a certain man was preparing a great banquet and invited many guests. At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, come for everything is now ready. Oh, church family, you got to catch this because what the text begins with, this parable that Jesus gives begins with what I call an important invitation, really important invitations because in verses 16 and 17, two invitations are given. The first is given by this wealthy landowner, this man who has a wonderful house and he wants all of his wealthy, well-to-do, wonderful friends to come over and hang out with him. Catch the picture. A wealthy man with a beautiful house. It's an opulent experience. The lavishness of this banquet is going to be so off the charts that everybody will be talking about it for days to come. And he invites the who's who list of that society at that time. He says, I want all of you to come. You can tell by those who make their, re their rationale in the later verses that they are doing fair fairly well. One just bought a field. Another just bought some oxen. They're doing well in life. And here is this wealthy man inviting all of his wealthy friends to come and hang out with him. And can't you see now the kitchen servants preparing all of the festive meal plan that is going to be served at that wonderful banquet. They are in there taking meticulous opportunities to ensure that every detail will be perfectly handled. These are they who are making 
sure that not only will they do their part, but all of those on the cleaning staff are going to make sure this beautiful house is well prepared and well adorned to receive these wealthy, well-to-do individuals. If that wasn't good enough, church family, you've got to see all of these folks scurrying about to make sure that whatever the master of the house wanted, it would be made available to him. And when his guests come, they are going to be so impressed that everybody's going to be talking about it for days to come. Have you ever been to a party that was so good that everybody was talking about it for the days and weeks that were behind it? Is there anybody in here who, my brother got his hand up, won't even put it down. I hear you, man. I, it was real good. He's still thinking about it right now. There's some experiences that we have had that were just so wonderful that we can't stop talking about it. If you went to our church gala just a few weeks ago, it was so phenomenal and fantastic that we've been talking about it ever since because there are some experiences that keep you talking. This is what was supposed to happen and these invitations go out. Verse 16, let us know that everybody who needed to get their invitation on this who's who list got it and they RSVP. Don't miss that detail. They said, I'll be there. I'm not going to miss this party. I'll be there. I will not miss this feast. I'll be there. I will not miss this banquet. It's going to be phenomenal. These invitations have gone out and by the time the kitchen crew and the cleaning crew and all the servants in the house have done what they were supposed to do, then the master of the house says, now servant, go tell everybody who RSVP'd it's time. Two invitations. The first one, I need you to come. They RSVP'd, I'll be there. Second invitation, it's time. Come on over to my place. It's going to be a great opportunity for us to enjoy the company of one another. And this is where the story gets difficult. Because in the midst of these important invitations and the fact that folk had RSVP'd, here come folk with disrespectful declinations. Oh my, disrespectful declinations. He had given some important invitations and now they reply on the second invitation with disrespectful declinations. They decline to show up when it's time. Here's the problem, you should see it. They have already prepared everything. All the food is in place. All the lavish adornments are in place. And now these folk are saying, we ain't coming. Hold up, wait a minute, flag on the place. Somebody has to do something. It's going to be some furniture moving around here in just a minute if somebody ain't at my party. I don't know if you've ever planned for people who RSVP'd and didn't show up, but it will make you feel some kind of way. There's a witness right there. If you ever planned for some people and they didn't show up, you spent your money? Yeah, all right, now you're saying amen to me. You understand what this man is dealing with. He spent his money to make sure that these people would be well taken care of, and now they decline. But listen to the declinations. Here's the first one. He says, um, I just bought a field, and I need to go look at it. Please excuse me. Second one, I just, I just bought five yoke of oxen. I need to go try them out. Please excuse me. Third one, I just got married. I ain't coming. That's, what, that's the Bible. I didn't make this up. He didn't say, please excuse me. He said, I can't come, period. Uh, <laughs> you got to check it, check it out again. Check it out. Here, here's the first man. I just bought a field. Please excuse me. I need to go look at it. This dude is consumed with his possessions. And because he's consuming his possessions, he can't come. Second guy, he says, I just bought five yoke of oxen. They're going to make sure my, my field is taken care of. My, my livelihood is on the line. My yoke of oxen need to be looked after. Please excuse me. He's consumed not with possessions, but with his profession. Here's the third guy. Third guy says, I just got married. I'm not coming. For him... It's personal. Yeah, it's personal. It's personal. He got to go see about what he need to see about. He need to go do what he need to do. He ain't got time to be coming to your little party. He's having a party all by him, not by himself, but over here. Yeah. Personal. It's personal. Now, church family, on the surface, all of this makes sense, doesn't it? 
If you bought a field, you want to go tend to it. If you bought some oxen, you want to go test them out. If you got married, you want to go and, and, and be married. But let's go deeper because that's just on a casual surface level. Preaching is not a casual event. So let me go deeper. Can we go deeper? Because it seems to me, church family, wake up your pew partner. Don't let them go to sleep right now. This is where it gets good. It seems to me that although he is saying, I need to go tend to my, to my field, I need to go see about it, his possessions are on the line. Let's be real clear. This is an insulting response. It's an excuse that has no weight or merit because nobody even then or now buys a field without looking at it first. <laughs> Makes no sense. Secondly, you get some yoke of oxen and now you want to test them out? You already bought them? Nobody buys the yoke of oxen and then tests it out. He is now has, he has no merit to his excuse. This makes no, this is disrespectful. And then this third man says, I just got married. I ain't got nothing to say about that. That's personal, that's his business. I'm a, that's personal, that's personal. But church family, let's be clear, let's be clear. When you're dealing with possessions and you get so consumed with possessions, you will make, you make some real bad mistakes when you let your possessions possess your soul. May I suggest on this Sunday afternoon that you and I must never let our possessions possess our souls. Listen to what Mark chapter 8 and Luke chapter 9 say. That uh, It says, what shall it profit any of us if we gain the whole world and lose our own soul? Oh, child of God, I know we want to amass things and we want to have things and things are nice to have. I know that Jesus said, I can make sure that all these things will be added unto you. But you got to catch what Jesus said first. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I wish I had 10 people in here who know your God is not opposed to you having things, but he wants you to seek him first, prioritize him first. Is there anybody in here who ever read the Bible? The Bible says that he will give you the desires of your heart if you delight yourself in him. Can I find seven people right over in here who are still delighted in the Lord and you have seen him opening up doors and making ways and giving you provisions you never thought possible. I need somebody in here who can testify with the psalmist in Psalm 23, my cup running over. Don't you let possessions possess your soul. Can I push it? I submit, church family, not only must we never let possessions possess our souls, but may I suggest secondarily that we never let our profession take precedence over our profession of faith. I know you went to school or you went to, uh, to training and you're doing well on your job, but when you allow that job to take first place in your life, it will begin to move you to a space with which God is not pleased. I know you're brilliant and I thank God for it, but if it hadn't been for God, you wouldn't have the mind to do the work that you're doing in the first place. I need 12, seven, 12 people right in here who can testify. The only reason I'm as far along as I am is because that God of mine has shown me favor. He's opened some doors. He's made some ways. I need 10 or 12 people up in there right there who can testify my profession is rooted in my profession of faith. I gave the Lord my life and the Lord said if you let me lead you and guide you, I'll promote you. I'll take you higher. I'll move you farther than you ever be, ever expected. The Bible says promotion does not come from the east or from the west. Promotion comes from the Lord. Lord. Anybody in here ever seen the Lord make your business better? Anybody ever seen the Lord help you navigate some of them enemies on your job? Anybody ever seen the Lord show you his favor in the workplace? I need somebody with a profession to testify because of my profession of faith, God has provided for me every day of my life. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. 
Oh, where the, where the retired saints who can testify? When I was working, it was because God kept making ways for me and opening doors for me and providing for me. Where the folk who are new to your career who can testify you got the job because God said yes to you and, and, and did not allow other folk who may have been more qualified to get the job you were going for. I need somebody who's been in the workforce for a few decades now to testify. The only reason I'm still sane is because he has kept me when I couldn't keep myself when they were digging ditches and planting traps he said I'm going to keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on me they may be trying to get you but no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper where are the people in here who've seen God work Bless his high name. It's, it's, it's possessions. You can't let possessions possess you. It's profession. Don't let the profession take precedence over your profession of faith. But can I talk, about, talk to you about personal stuff? I think we ought to make sure that we never allow our personal stuff to override our personal relationship with the Lord. No, no, you didn't respond like you should have. And since this is the last service, I can preach as long as I need to. I said, don't let your personal stuff override your personal relationship with the Lord. Don't you let all these, these personal realities get in the way of a personal relationship. I need 10 or 12 people who understand that I can have a bunch of friends and family and loved ones who are circling me, but friends, family, and loved ones can be fake, fickle, finite, and funny acting. I need somebody who is faithful. I need a God who's on my side every time I call him. I need somebody who will rock me in the cradle of his arms. I, I need somebody who will, swo will kept keep me when I'm trying to get a good night's sleep at night. I need somebody with a, who, has, who has my best interest at heart. Enjoy your personal stuff, but don't let it get in the way of a personal relationship with the Lord. If your friends don't understand when you want to come to church and not just start your July 4th weekend off on the 3rd, you need to make some new friends because you need to have somebody who understands, I got to trust God for the next days of my life. I need to hear what God has to say. The holiday is tomorrow. The Lord's Day is today. Anybody in here said, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. We'll get to the grilling later. This holiday ain't about y'all anyway. This holiday about something else. Is there anybody in here who can help me celebrate? I got a relationship with the Lord. Woo! Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. I'm just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust him, how I proved him o'er and o'er. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust him more. Don't you let your stuff get in the way of a relationship with the sovereign. Don't you let your stuff get in the way of a relationship with the Savior, in a relationship with the Spirit. I need somebody who can testify, I'm sticking with the Lord. And he promised that all these things would be added unto me. Well, I got to close, my time is out, but can I give you one last thing? I submit, church family, that when the Lord Jesus gives us this parable, he starts with important invitations. He moves us then to show some disrespectful declinations. When they decline, the master of the banquet, who is emblematic of Jesus himself. The master of the banquet then come, becomes angry, becomes hot. And um, when he gets incensed, he gives to them finally some intriguing invocations. Invokes some things. He entreats some things. He says, listen, this is what I want you to do. Uh, go get the blind the cripple, the lame, and all those who are poor and bring them to the house. 
if them rich folk think they can trust in their riches alone, let them try it. Go get the folk who know they need to depend on something and someone bigger than tangible stuff. Go get them, the, 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 the crippled, the lame, the blind, the poor. Now, this is radical reorientation, church, because nobody cared much about those four groups of people. As a matter of fact, they were the overlooked, the, the oppressed, they were the outcasts. And, and Jesus says that when the banquet gets thrown, if the big shots won't show up, go get the outcasts, the oppressed, and the overlooked, because they have a place at my table. Woo. And the Bible says when he went, when the servant went to go get them, he comes back, makes a report to his master. He says, sir, <laughs> we did what you told us to do. And all the poor came in here. And all the lame and all the blind, all the crippled, they showed up and there's still room. He said, oh, there's still room? Well, let me go King James. Go out into the highways and hedges and compel everybody to come in and have a seat at my table. Oh, child of God, this is real good because now these Pharisees, experts of the law, are hearing the kingdom of God in a different ear. They're on a different decibel level now. They now understand that God is not just interested in the high and mighty. He is interested in the low and weak as well. There is no one that is beyond his reach, no one beyond his grasp. As a matter of fact, he will make room for the folk you think don't deserve room. And I'm so grateful that that's the kind of God we serve, that this God of ours knows how to make room when everybody else is trying to keep us out. I don't know if you've ever been excluded from anything, but if there's anybody in here who knows what it means to be excluded from a certain reality, you ought to get happy to know that your Jesus included you when a feast came available at the table. I need 10 or 12 people who will help me close this message and begin to testify. Marcus D. Cosby, I'm so grateful that I don't have to have all the right credentials. I didn't have to go to all the right schools. I don't have to know all the right people to be included in the family of God. I'm so grateful he just makes room for me because he created me in his image and after his likeness. And I need 10 or 12 people at the Wheeler Avenue Church this afternoon to expand your understanding of who is included because just because you don't like them just because they don't look like you act like you smell like you behave like you that does not mean they're not included in the family it does not mean they don't have a seat at the table I wish I had 10 or 12 people in here who know that a few years ago no last year a few months ago a sister by the name of Katanji Brown Jackson wouldn't have been included at a certain table a bitch but on this Sunday afternoon, she can testify that she is a justice of the United States Supreme Court because when God gets ready to favor you, it doesn't matter who wants to exclude you, he still includes you. Now, I need to find the folk who've seen the favor of God on your life. I need to find some folk who know good and well that you didn't deserve every blessing and every miracle and every open door. I need you to go ahead and encourage your pupil partner. If he did it for me, he can do it for you. Same God who did it for me loves you enough to do it for you. And he'll find the dispossessed. He'll find the disenfranchised. He'll find those who've been pushed to the margins of society. As a matter of fact, when he said go to the highways and go to the hedges, here's the picture that was painted. All those who stayed on the outside of the city gate, they were ones who did not have homes. They did not have land of their own. And when evening time came, they would shut the gate of the city so that those who were homeless and landless could not get in to bother those who were well-to-do. And this master of the house said, don't you dare close that gate because everybody outside the gate is welcome at that table. I need to ask who in the, the world left the gate open? And I got a good answer for you. His name is Jesus. 
Jesus. He opened the gate. He opened the door and said, whosoever will, let them come. And is there anybody in here today who said, I'm one of the ones who answered the call? So I need to ask you a question. You in or out? Are you wait, making your way to the table? Are you making your way to the feast? When we all get there, we're going to have a good time one with another. Come on in where the table is spread and the feast of the Lord is going on. I need 10 or 12 people who know he still prepares tables for those nobody else would have access to. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, he prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He anoints my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, I said surely, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I'm in, y'all. Can't nobody put me out. I'm in. I'm going to eat fans sumptuously at the table. I'm in, y'all. And I got a funny feeling and a sneaking suspicion that I'm not the only one in church today who can testify that you're in. You're included. Don't deserve it, but he did it anyway. Can't work toward it, but he did it anyway. Can't earn it, but he did it anyway. Somebody ought to testify if it had not been for the Lord who was on your side. You wouldn't be at the table, but I need you to take a seat, sit yourself down, eat well as long as you want to, because the master says you are welcome here. you got a place here. This is your house as well as it's my house. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You in or out? You in or out? You in or out? When he tells me to come, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart, I'll agree. And my answer, will be yes, Lord, yes, amen, 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 amen. Can I be honest? Far too long, the church has been trying to close the gate let the Lord Jesus open. Far too long, we've said only these folk are permitted and these folk are excommunicated. When Jesus said, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. By some folks standards, you shouldn't be included. By some folks standards, I shouldn't be included. But by the standards of the Lord, he says, oh, go get the crippled, <laughs> the lame, the blind, the poor, and anybody out there hanging around the gate and let them know there's room at this feast for you. I want you to know that this afternoon. God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. If you're here on this Sunday afternoon and you say, Pastor, I need to be at the table. I've stayed away far too long. I didn't know I was invited and included. I thought I had to act like them and look like them. 
to be included. Jesus said, no, 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 you mine. <laughs> you don't belong to them. You belong to me. You're mine. You're my child. So that parable, that earthly story with a heavenly meaning was given so that we might know that there is no one who is excluded from the family of God. No one who is excluded. And if he set the parameters, I dare not change them. And don't you try to do it either. If you're here on this Sunday afternoon, you say, Pastor, I need to be a part of this family of faith, this congregation of beloved, of the beloved all over the world who have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior. I want to be a part of that family. I want you to come toward us now. The Hallows are going to come and stand with me. And while they're standing with me, if you, if you need to make a decision for the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to start walking toward me too. You say, Pastor, secondarily, I'm saved, but I need a church home. I'm coming to Wheeler Avenue. Come on, come on, come on. I'm compelling you to come. There's room, there's room. Come on, get out by that seat. Get up out of that seat. Come on down this way. Man, woman, boy, or girl. Doesn't matter your age or stage. Doesn't matter your ethnicity. Doesn't matter your background. Doesn't matter where you came from. Come on, doesn't matter if you're crippled, poor, lame, blind. Come on, come on. Ah, that hits me every time at the cross. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Celebrate, they're coming, church. Look at them monkey their way. Look at them, look at them. Yes, yes, come on, come on. This is where you belong. This is your house. The feast is going on. The feast is going on. Come on. Come on, come on, come on. There is still room for one. There's room, there's room. Come on. Come on. Bring him in the wheelchair. I'm with that. I'm with that. That's Bible. That's Bible. Come on. Come on, God bless you. So glad to have you. Hey, sis, God bless you. Welcome to the family. Welcome to your church. They're coming down from the balcony. Come on, come on, come on. At the cross. At the cross. For you, for you. For you. Who else needs to come? Come on, there's room. There is room. So happy to have you, man. Glad you're here. At the cross. Yes, yes, yes. For you. For you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Who else needs to come? Millions have come. There's still room. There's still room. There is still room. Oh, oh, oh. Come on, come on. There's room. There is room. Thank you, Lord. At the cross. At the cross. For you. Now, we are after folks, you know how we do it. Look towards somebody on your road. Ask him, is the pastor waiting on you? Ask him, is the pastor waiting on you? You know there's room. He just told you. He just told you there's room. If they say no, say praise the Lord. If they say yes, say I'll walk with you. Can't walk for you. Come on, tell him to get on down there. You know it's room for you. Come on. I see you coming, sis. God bless you. Come on, come on. Come on. You may be high. Yeah. You may be low. Rich and poor. You yeah. may be rich. Yeah. Come on. You may be poor. There's room. But there is room. Hallelujah. 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 At the cross for you. There is room. Yes, there is. I got a funny feeling I'm still waiting on some people who need to make their way. Come on, come on, friend, come on. For you. Talking about you, talking about you. Yes, yes, there is room. You are welcome here, you. There is still room at the cross. For you. For you. Yes, yes. No millions. Millions have come. Millions have already come. There's room. There is still Come on, sis. Come on. We will make
just for you. At the cross. At the cross. We're still coming. At the cross. Where I first saw the light. Well, I first saw the light. And the burden. And the burden. Come on, sisters, come on. Up my heart. Roll away. They roll. I need you to help me. We're going to do something different today. Say welcome to Wheeler Avenue. One more is coming down the aisle. Tell us she's welcome while she's walking. Tell us she's welcome while she's walking. your church family welcome you to one of the best feasts you will ever enjoy we're so glad you're here and we can't wait to see what god is going to do in you with you through you and for you because you're now a part of the family of wheeler avenue baptist church church families celebrate all of them as they make their way to our new orientation room let me just say please you can holler please Go this way, my friends. Go with our brothers and sisters. And I'm hugging you and welcoming you to Wheeler Avenue Baptist Church. So glad you're here. Look at what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. Roll away. Yes, Lord. It was there by faith. Yes, I received my son.
show some sign about our happiness in the Lord this Sunday afternoon. Praise the Lord. You may be seated if you choose to be seated. I'm so excited. The Lord just added to our church 34 new sisters and brothers as a part of the family of Wheeler Avenue. Praise the Lord. Now we come to the table of the Lord where we are invited to come to remember what the Lord has done for us. I love that table imagery that runs from the Old Testament through the New Testament. Just mentioned Psalm 23, how the Lord prepares a table before us, the presence of our enemies. The feast of the Lord has a table prepared, both in the here and now and the by and by. We are grateful that we have this opportunity to come to this table most significant and sacred table in the entirety of the Christian reality. For it is here where we remember what Jesus Christ did for us to secure our inclusion in the family, to secure our relationship with him. As we come to this table this afternoon, we're reminded that in that upper room, the night before the Lord Jesus died, he took those disciples into that space and told them, to eat of the bread and drink of the cup, doing so in remembrance of him. And as often as they would do that, they would show forth his death until he comes again. And so we do the same thing that those disciples did then. And disciples all across this country, all around the world, do it to this day. Believers on every continent, in every country, in every city, in every church, remember the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, as we come to this table today, we reenact what took place on that Thursday evening just before the Lord was arrested in the Garden of Gethsemane. We eat of the bread and drink of the cup, but before doing so, we consecrate these elements so they, like the ones in that upper room, might be set apart, sanctified, for spiritual use for the disciples of Jesus Christ. The chairman of deacons shall now word that prayer for us, and as he does, Let's, as the Bible says, we read it this afternoon, examine ourselves and ask the Lord to make us better in the month of July than we were in the month of June. Let's examine ourselves. We have been invited to the table. We should never stay the same way we've always been. So let's ask God to make us better in the days to come than we have been in the days gone by. Chairman, will you please lead us in prayer? Church family, let us pray. Our God and our Father in heaven, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord God, that your word has gone forth and it has reminded us that on the faithful night that Jesus was betrayed, disciples were invited to an upper room, yeah. to a table that was prepared for them. And on that next day, Jesus, who was lifted up on the cross, who said, if I, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, that by drawing us to you, we have been invited to the table. <laughs> God, we thank you for the invitation to come. And now, Lord, as we are here around this table, as we remember the death of Jesus, the sacrificial death, yeah. the one who died for our sins, the one who knew no sin, My God, Lord. we thank you that the blood still covers us, still washes us clean. Yes and prepares us, Lord God, to serve you. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for these elements on this table that represent your broken body and the bread and your shed blood. The wine represents that. That we know, Lord, without it, there would be no remission of sin. So we thank you for the blood. We pray that you bless these elements, that they'll be used for uplifting your kingdom here on earth. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving and great expectation. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Brother Chairman. Let me ask if there, are other, if there are individuals in the Lord's house who have not yet been served, you did not receive your elements, and you came into the Lord's church, I see this north. We'll make sure that you are served. Those who have not received the, Lord, the elements, just slip up your hand, and our servants will ensure that you're well taken care of. Yes. As we sing this great song of the church, we remind ourselves of the gospel in one verse. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. 
Let's sing together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever salvific value in the bread or in the wine. These are symbols of our faith to remind us of the salvific value of the broken body of Jesus Christ and his shed blood. So no, there is no salvation in the bread. Salvation is in the Lord's body. No salvation in the cup is in the Christ who shed his blood. So as we remember, that's what he told us to do, remember, put, put the pieces back together. Remember to 
to, to make everything get back in focus and put the puzzle piece, remember, put that stuff back together. We, we see a picture of a Savior who loved us so much that he would take our place at Calvary to transform us, to redeem us, to save us from our sin. As you hold this bread in your hand, it is a symbol of the broken body of Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. As we remember the wounded, broken body of Jesus, let's eat the bread together. You have now opened that cup. In it there is what is known as the fruit of the vine. The aroma has now wafted through the room. It has hit your nose. You, you can smell the fragrance. It's unforgettable. It's undeniable. So too the blood of Jesus. Unforgettable, undeniable, unfathomable. That blood, according to the song, <laughs> thank you, Andre Crouch, it reaches to the highest mountain. That's for the wealthy folk. Flows to the lowest valley. That's for the poor folk and everybody in between. The blood that gives us strength from day to day will never lose its power. So as we drink of the cup today, we thank God for the blood of Jesus and for what he did, the farthest extent to which he would go to secure our salvation. As we drink today, we do so in remembrance of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's drink together. We give you thanks, great God, because you keep on doing great things. Every time we open our eyes, you wow us again. Every time we open our eyes, you prove to us that you're still on our side. We thank you for that. Today we come to this table to go through the same experience we will go through on every first Sunday of any given month because we remember that Jesus Christ died in our stead. We remember with gratitude that Jesus Christ took our place at Calvary. We remember that without the shedding of blood there is no remission of sin. So we rehearse the same story over and over again so that we will never forget what you have done for us through Jesus Christ. Today we tell you thank you. Now we pray that our lives will be indicative of our gratitude. And as we go through the month of July, we will live lives that please you. We'll seek to bless somebody else knowing that we've been so abundantly blessed. We pray, great God, that you will help us to be light in this dark world, oh my world has so much going on, but I thank you that you've divinely deputized us to be light in our various locations so that people might see the brilliance of Jesus Christ. Help us to be your witnesses everywhere that we go so they will hear of your goodness and of your grace. Now we pray in the name of the Lord Jesus that as we leave from this place, not knowing what's going to happen in the remaining days of July, but we're so grateful that you're going with us through it all, that you will be with us and help us to ensure that somebody's life is made better because you placed us in this world. So be with us, we pray. Guide, lead, direct us, correct us, protect us. May your will be done through us so that you might get the glory out of us. We pray this prayer with great expectation for the days that are ahead and with great gratitude for what you've already done. In the strong name, that is above every name, even the name Jesus Christ. We pray this prayer with thanksgiving and expectation and all of God's people together said hallelujah. Let the church say amen. Amen. Your Bible says that after they had finished at the table, they sang a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. Our ushers are going to lead us as we leave from this place today, but we're all going to leave singing, giving God the glory that is due unto him. And as we sing, may God bless you 
until we get back together next Sunday at 8 or 11.30. Go in peace, my father's children, and may the peace of God be yours. The ushers have receptacles for your cups. Please make sure you don't leave them on the pews. Let's take care of the Lord's house and keep it in order as we leave. Go in peace. Go in peace. At the cross where I first saw the light.